Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another session on Adobe Live. If you guys are tuning in on YouTube, come on over to Behance so we can check out your chat. Um, in chat, just say hello. Tell us where you're from. Um, we're here with Angelo today. He's going to be walking us through some really great editorial work. Um, hello, Wade. Hello, Hillary. Hello, Anika. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, Angelo, tell us a little bit about you. I know you've got a really exciting quick little deck to walk us through, but I want to let everybody get to meet you. Yeah, great. Yeah, so I, I wanted to start out uh, today's uh, stream with just talking about a little bit about myself and then taking you through the, the process of the next couple days. Um, I'll be going over some of the editorial designs, uh, but first a little bit about me. So I was born here in, and raised in Windsor, Ontario, also known as the automotive capital of Canada. Um, my design journey started in print and editorial design, having worked at a daily newspaper in my city for 11 years, the Windsor Star. Um, this is where I discovered my passion for design, uh, page layout, layout composition, and especially typography. Um, in 2017, I left the print media world and explored teaching at a community college uh, with a focus on editorial and branding design. Um, I taught visual design to journalism and public relations students during that time. Um, and also during this time, I used uh, my experience in the editorial and print design field uh, to, to learn how to become a more well-rounded designer. Uh, I grew increasingly interested in branding design and have even started learning motion design during that time. Awesome. Yeah. So. Um, I want to take you through uh, what the next couple days will look like. So first and foremost, I want to give you an overview um, of the project, which will be creating a modern lifestyle magazine layout consisting of four spreads. Uh, hopefully we can get through all of it during that, that time. Um, taking you from the initial uh, document setup to final design while going over key InDesign tools along the way. So we will be primarily using InDesign. Um, I'll share some of my favorite editorial design workflow tips and tricks using InDesign, but feel free to share yours as well. I'd love to know how you work in InDesign. Um, much of the two days will be focused on layout and design, while part of the last day will be going over how to add interactivity to the magazine, giving you an option to make it digital for EPUB uh, or online publishing. So not many people know that InDesign has this great feature that you can use to uh, take your print layouts and turn them into a uh, screen display uh, or prepare them for screens. Uh, so we'll go through that and how to add um, just a uh, photo uh, menu. So we'll, we'll, we'll work with object states and uh, buttons and forms and these types of things. So a little bit more about the project, the modern lifestyle magazine I'll be working on will consist of four sections altogether, uh, home decor, outdoor living, fashion, and travel. Some of the key points I'll be going over during the stream is how to set up custom color swatch groups, uh, creating paragraph styles, using effects, applying InDesign's new select subject text wrap, and much, much more. So feel free during the next couple of days um, as I'm working through this to ask questions on uh, anything that I'm, I'm doing uh, or anything in InDesign in, in general. So the outcome, the goal over the next two days is to go over some of the basics of editorial design and grasp some of the concepts of creating modern, simple, clean layouts. So what you see on the screen, on, on my screen here, um, you can already get a sense of the, my type of uh, design style, just clean, simple, um, and, and that, that's, that's, what, um, that's what I enjoy when I'm, when I'm designing. Um, so organization, balance, hierarchy, and attention to detail are some of the common things I will go over and hope you can take away from this stream as well. So that's my little uh, uh, deck just to, to kind of get you set up for the next couple of days. This is great. Thank you so much, Angelo, for putting this together, because I think this is a really good summation of both you as a person, as a creative, and then what we're looking to kind of jump into over the next couple of days. So I'm really excited. And as always, chat, if you have any questions throughout the process, I will be happy to kind of surface them. We can talk about, you know, the life, the business, 
the career and then also of course in design all those great things and kind of work through it together so i'm really excited about that um we've got viewers from all over the world right now uh california uh oregon india kind of everywhere oh, western canada as well so hello everybody thank you so much for tuning in and we're excited to jump into it i'll let you take it away angelo yeah so i guess the first step is creating a document so i'm just going to hit create new here i'm going to make my way up to the print tab okay and the document size we'll be working on today is A4. So that's pretty standard for magazine layout. Um, so if you don't see it here in the top three document presets, just click view all presets and it should be in, in one of these sets here. So. Um, and since we are thinking about doing an EPUB print, uh, version later on, are we gonna be working in CMYK right now? Or are we thinking that the end goal for this is gonna be digital? Yeah, right now, I guess I'm just going to set it up as a, uh, just a print document. Um, okay. And I'll, I'll show you how the interactivity works at the end. But you would, if you were doing a straight, if you were doing a straight interactive uh, document, then you would, you would hit web. And then you would want to pick um, the size and pixels. So if it's right. more, and, and you also have to keep in mind, um, you have to keep in mind the screen that it will be displayed on. So there are options here for mobile as well. Um, or if it's going on an iPad size, but for today, it just happens that a four will also kind of work for an uh, iPad screen size. So I'm just going to work in this setting for, for the next couple days. Awesome. All right. So, um, I have the page size here, so we're going to, we're going to go eight pages. Okay. And we're going to leave facing pages on. Now, because there's not a cover and I want four sets of facing pages, I'm going to have the start number at two. And the columns will be, um, actually the columns, I don't set columns in this uh, portion. I'm going to take you through on how to create guides after. Uh, we'll do that in the master pages in just a bit. So um, the margin size is actually 0 0.625. And of course, you can hit your preview button here to see your work as you're, as you're setting things up. So I'm pretty happy with what I have here and I'll just hit create. If I go to my pages panel here, you could see I have all four uh, sets there. And because I set it to start at two, there's no um, single page up top. So we're not gonna be working on a cover. So we're gonna be focused more on doing uh, the spreads themselves. In terms of my workspace, I, I typically work in the essentials tab here. And then if I'm working with interactive tabs, you can see on my side panel here, what I do is I just open them up separately and I open them up and add them to my, my, uh, my doc here. Okay. First thing I want to do actually is go up to my a master page here. And this is where I'm going to set up um, some guides. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to layout and create guides. Now it's okay to add columns to your document size. I prefer doing it this way so I can add some rows and columns um, in the master pages and then they're kind of set to what I like to work with. Um, so for this, I have uh, four rows. I'm gonna hit my preview button there. And the gutter size for the rows is 0 0.25. And I'm going to set two columns also at 0 0.25. And the fit to guide options um, here, I usually have it set to the margins and not the page. Okay. Is there any reason why you do that? Um, it just, it, it, for me, I, I, I just, it's a personal preference, I guess, but if you wanted to set it to page, you can do that as well. Um, but for me, it snaps it to the margins and it's just, it's a little bit easier as I'm working. Yeah. I think personally, whenever I've done it with the page, it gives you kind of those lopsided grids because you're always trying to make sure that you're not getting clipped on the side. So I think it's, yeah, yeah it's super helpful. I like exactly. That. Exactly. So I'll hit okay. And if at any point you wanted to um, remove these guides, because remember I've, I've set those in the A master. If I go here, I can't move these. 
So you'll have mm. to go back into the A master, go to layout, create guides, and then just remove existing guides and then set, set the new guides. I'm going to hit cancel. And yeah. for people who are brand new to InDesign, uh, do you mind explaining just quickly what a, a master slide does for your layouts? And yeah. So right now I only have one master page, um, and this is great for page numbering, which I'm going to get into it shortly. Um, if you were to do like a folio line, if it was like a magazine that had, or like, um, a publication that had a date, instead of doing those dates on every page, you can set them in the master and then just drag, you could drag this page to, um, the actual page in your document. So you could see by me just setting the, the guides, every page in my document now has those guides. Okay. And if you want, if, if you don't want the, um, the guides set here, just right, right click and you can override, um, master page items on a single page if you wanted to. Yeah. It's super helpful, especially when you're kind of new to InDesign, there's a lot of tricks that help systematize right. your publications and it's super like it's super helpful to learn that you can build a bunch of different masters if you want you can do masters for light mode dark mode things like that's going to help keep things automated for you so you don't have to rebuild it i think if you're very experienced with working in illustrator or photoshop you might be used to just copy paste put it in the corner right like page numbers and things like that you just kind of have to do that work over and over again but with indesign the name of the game is automating the process as much as possible so that you don't have to just redo that. Or if you change one type style, you don't have to go in and make sure every single paragraph is adjusted. You've already set that. So that's, that's right. what we're it's just about... going to keep harping on over and exactly. over Exactly. How about just working it more efficiently as well, right? So it takes a lot of the, um, you're cutting down the, the time and doing things long form. Yeah. Exactly. It might take so... a little bit more time to set it up, but the dividends at the end are, are huge. That's right. That's right. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just grab my type tool and drag out a frame here. And the name of this magazine totally made it up is modish magazine. And the type I'm, I'm primarily using, um, for most of this, this magazine, I'm using two typefaces. So, um, be lie display. Is it be lie or belly? I think it's be lie display. It's an Adobe font, which is, is really nice. So let's start with that. And, um, so BLI display. And I'm just going to sh shrink it down a bit. So make it about eight point. You don't want this to be too um, big at the top of the page. I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to open up the tracking a little bit. So if I go to my properties panel, I'm going to do everything for the most part as a shortcut and then kind of guide you through how to find it in the settings here. So I'm holding down option and my right arrow key to open up the tracking. But you can also find it here um, in the properties panel in the character uh, settings. So right now I have it opened up to uh, positive plus 120. Let's make it 100 is fine. And here's a little trick to, um, this is again, a personal preference. I don't like seeing text frames um, just kind of open like that. Uh, I like to see them you know, nice and snug around, around the, uh, the text. So just double click on any of the handles to get that to where you want. And right There's now- There's also gonna... a shortcut for all of them, right? What is that command? I forget. What's that to- To, to snugly- Really? So say, oh yeah, there is a one where like, if I've built my whole page with that, the text box being loose, you can do like command. Somebody in chat, especially one of the mods will tell us. Yes, please. It, it's great. It does that that shrinking instead of double clicking it constantly. Okay. You can set five different paragraphs if you want and then do the one command and it'll tighten it all up for everything. All right, so I'm gonna, that's great. If you find that out, please let me know because I don't know that one. That's I'll, amazing. I'll do a Google. I... Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got one on the left, uh, left side here. I'm just gonna do an alt and drag and bring that over to the right side. And I want these lined up obviously. So what I'm gonna do is zoom out a bit, select both and just make sure that they're aligned to the vertical centers here. And right now it's black, that's fine. I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, we can always revisit and change the color as we go. Um, and as far as page numbering goes, what I'll do here is maybe um, 
create a, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'll grab the text type tool again. And in type, under type, I should say, um, just click in the, first you wanna click in the text frame, go up to type, insert special character, markers, and then current page number. I want, oops, that's not what I wanted. Lucy's saying it's option command C. Really? So we can probably give it a test in a bit and see. Am I in? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not in my oh, master page right now. So I have to, okay. that's where I went wrong. Okay, let me go back and copy these out. Cut, go to my A master. Somehow I got out of my master page. Um, to a quick way of uh, paste in place, shift option command V as in Victor. And now I'm in my master page. And a good way of knowing that is, do you see the text frame is dashed there? Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good way of knowing that you're working in in uh, the master page there. So let's try that again. I'm going to create a text frame again. And now I'm going to go to type, insert special character, uh, markers, current page number. And you'll see that what comes in is uh, just an A, the letter A. Um, so. We could stylize this now. Um, so I'm using Beli Display, and I paired it with Avenir Next. So Avenir is one of my favorite uh, fonts. And um, let's go to, let's try, uh, you know, Demi Bold is good for now. And I'll, I'll come back and, and, and uh, make it the color for the theme that we're using. But also, um, let's go into our text frame options. To get there, if you're on a Mac, just hold down your option key and double click on the text frame or command B as in Bob, or you could just do it the long way, object text frame options. And let's go ahead and um, We have to insert, just increase the inset there. Hmm. Let me do this instead, actually. I'm just gonna create another, just because of the uh, the spacing on that. I have a bunch of color here, colors here that I don't need. For now, I'm just gonna make it this blue. Let's move that in there. Bring to front is uh, shift command square bracket or go up to object, arrange, bring to front. I'm just gonna make it white for now. And again, we will change that as we're working. This is looking great already. I'm very excited to see where we get in two days. So you could see, um, well, thanks, Alex. <laughs> thanks, that's awesome. Um, as you I'm, can see, I'm slightly biased. I love blue. So any, any well, that could change. Things. That's just a placeholder oh, for now. No. For now, for now. Um, so if I, I'm just gonna get out of the A master just for a sec again. If I double click on page two, you could see that is now two. Um, so let's go back to A master, and I'm gonna. Just um, drag out another copy here and drag it on to page three and set it right in the bottom corner there. And let's check that out. So page two, page three, four, five, and so on. So because all these are set to a master uh, right now, um, you see the numbering system takes place. So as Alex mentioned, it just saves you time in the long run. You don't want to be adding those numbers um, individually to pages. That would take an eternity, especially if you're yeah. working on a, a document that's like 50 pages. Could you could you imagine that, Alex? Oh, I, I've been there. It's, it's <laughs> tough, man. <laughs> especially when it started off as like, oh, I'm going to be lazy. This This won't be that big. It's only two pages. And then, you know, client revisions come in and it's slowly the scope gets creeped out and then it's a 50 page document before you even realize it. That's right. Um, 
even like this is also great like you've already set up with the page numbers and then the magazine title i've had a lot of clients that want to have um like for brand guidelines that want to have their version or date of the last one and that's a you know a 50 page document and it needs to be version 1.024.2019 or whatever and yep. this is a really quick way of going in updating all the type styles updating everything and making sure that the version number is on every single page yeah it's just a great way of working so try to get into that habit as you're as you're working in editorial design yeah um so i'm gonna open up my libraries here i have the sections with all the assets already built out um so i'm not going to be going to stock i could if uh if i need anything additional um but the first um i guess the first spread will be home decor so I'm just going to start bringing on the content onto the page. And um, it, again, if anyone has any questions as we're working, feel free to ask or again, share your workflow tips, which is great. So when I, when I worked at uh, the newspaper, um, one of the first things I learned or one of a good friend of mine said, when you're building out a page, always have pick your artwork and then build around that. So have a focal point when you're, when you're working know what the primary foc focal point will be. Um, so in this case, it's going to be this image here. That I'm just going to, oops, not that one. Looks like I had them all selected there. So let's try that again. And I'm just going to use my margin and have this go over two rows onto the right page. When you're dragging out an image, you can drag it out like free form like this, but if you want to constrain the proportions um, to what you want it to go, just hold down your shift key. See how I want it to kind of conform to that area there. And then I'm just going to let go. Then what you can do is go in and start maneuvering it how you want. All these images will likely come in a little large if you don't resize them. Um, but again, click on your content grabber or donut as some people call it hold down shift option command and c to have it um fit the, the frame um, i just feel like my mind was blown with that that short code or the the short yeah keys. it's it's one that i use very commonly because imagine having to go i mean you could use your fitting tools up here mm -hmm. uh, the one that's really good is indesign's content aware fit so if you have a, an image that comes in just ginormous like this you can just click content aware fit and it'll it'll kind of um fit to the uh the frame and then you'll just kind of have to move things up and whatnot but yeah. i do like shift option command c yeah that's awesome uh voodoo val said in chat i don't know about you folks in chat but i honestly thought for a long time that people who designed for a living near never make mistakes and then i feel bad about myself when i made mistakes but that's not true or realistic I always say, Alex, if you're not making mistakes, you're not working hard enough. So yeah, or you're not learning, or you're, you're not just learning doing the same thing right? that you've been doing for 15 years, and that's fine for some folk. But I like learning. Like this has been already hugely helpful for me as in my design career, and I've I've used it in design a lot, and I didn't realize how wrong I was doing it the whole time. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have. Um, all right, so uh, two, three. So the headline here will be living in style. So let's grab our um, type tool again and drag out text frame. And in one text frame, I'm gonna have living in, um, and that'll be about, let's try 60 point. And again, that will be uh, BLI display. Actually, before we go any further, because I'm going to need, I'm going to need colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into these, my swatches here and get rid of a lot of these Pantone colors that I've previous, previously had here. You can just group them. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. If you want, trash. if you want to. Oh yeah. We don't yeah, need no. Pantone colors where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, these are just kind of like, yeah. Let me just trash them. I don't need, you know what? Perfect. Or I'll just keep going. That's fine. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create groups under them. So I just didn't want oh, nice. to. 
So for this, I want to use my color theme tool. So in your, your tools panel here, just click that. And if I go into this area here, anywhere I can click and it'll create a color theme for me. Oh, okay. So, I mean, there's five to choose from. Um, I usually look for a good mix. So you have colorful, um, bright, dark, deep, muted. Um, I'm going to try muted. So muted is good. And then just to add it to your swatch, just go ahead and click um, this icon here. Add this theme to the swatches. And if I go down below, you'll see that it's called muted theme. So I'm just going to rename that that uh, group to uh, spread one colors. That's awesome. I, I'm a huge fan of using color palettes from the material that you're working with, it reinforces that. I find it as good at ins good inspiration, right? So especially yeah. a lot of times if you're working on a magazine or whatnot that already has um, a style guide applied, then obviously you would go with that. Yeah. But um, if, you, if you don't, then you're kind of stuck. And that's a good way of getting inspiration. And the cool thing about that, these, these are all global swatches, right? So I can, yeah. I'm not stuck to these. I could double click them and then adjust accordingly, Absolutely. right? And I may do that. I may do that if I need to, but right for now, I think that's, that's fine. And if, uh, you're, if you're new to InDesign, global swatches means that the color is linked throughout your, your document. So like he was saying, he could adjust it however he wants, whenever he wants, and it will, any color that's marked as that green would be moved to say he chooses pink, it will be moved to pink all throughout the document, which again, saves you so much time down the end of the road. That's um, right. And that's what it's about, right, uh, Alex? Just saving saving time. Exactly. Just setting I'm, it up. Also, there's nothing worse than getting an end of design doc from somebody who hasn't spent the time to set it up correctly. And then you're trying to figure out where the type styles are coming from. You update one thing and then you have to look through the document. Um, so, yep. yeah. And exactly. Greg Rowe asked, are there any good resources for getting free portfolio reviews slash critiques? Um, I'm not sure if you know of any, Angelo, but I know that there's a bunch of Discord links that we have for okay. both Photoshop and Illustrator, but there's a bunch of Discord communities and creative communities all around where people are more than willing to kind of share their ideas and what they're seeing. Um, and if you go, hey, can you give me a critique? I find most, more often than not, people are willing to help you out with the some time. Yeah, that's a good point. Those are good uh, resources there. I think sharing your work is a big one too, right? People yeah. shouldn't be afraid to share their work. Um, Absolutely. It's a great way of learning too. Constructive criticism. Yep. Um, so I have uh, my text in living in style and let's try making it that color there. Again, we may, we may uh, revisit that and uh, change that. Let's make that living in, yeah, something like that. And let's let's actually here's a good example of how I could change that. Um, how I can go in and change that color there. So let me um, let me double click it because I want it to be a little bit lighter. So hit your preview button and see how I'm just I'm adjusting the sliders here, the mm -hmm. CMYK. Um, and it's changing live on the page, but keep in mind, whenever you're using that specific green and you're doing this, it's going to change as Alex mentioned, it's going to apply throughout the entire document. Um, so if you don't want to do that, uh, just keep that in mind. I just want it a little bit lighter. I'm really into like those pastel, like green. Like, I'm not sure why. I just, I really think it's a cool color. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of emerald green just because of the richness of it. Yeah. Um, yep. So I totally, I totally understand. Okay. So I'm going to hit okay. Now, a good trick in InDesign is using what's called a gradient feather to have the text read better on images. Yep. As you can see here, there's so much distract distraction that's going on in the image that the type, the type isn't, isn't reading well. So I'm just going to um, click on my rectangle frame tool and create another, um, just a rectangle frame that stretches 
from one end to the other. And I'm going to make this uh, just black for now. Perfect. Solved all the readability issues. Yeah, right there. That's better, <laughs> right? Much, much better. I go to my properties panel and I usually do all my adjustments in here. So this little effects button, I'm going to click that and I want to add a gradient feather. And for this, I think I want it to about 90 degrees for the location. Oops, maybe I'll just type it in. And let's make, let me just hit okay for now. I'm gonna click that, that rectangle frame, pull my command key down and just start sending it backward. So you can see that that's a little bit better already. I'm gonna click it again. And let's just maybe darken it up a little bit more. So now with with the that feather in the background kind of helping bring that legibility and readability into it, would you say that you would probably try to pull more of that green from the background of the wallpaper again? Or do you still feel like it needs to be a little bit lighter to contrast it for more readability? How um, do you typically go about this stuff? Do you mean the, the green in the, on the wall here? Correct, yeah. When you originally chose it, you kind of pulled from that color palette nicely. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, to kind of match that green. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. point. So I'd probably go back. I mean, what I would do now is actually go to swatches again and double click and then try to match it a little bit more. Again, the, 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 the challenge is not making it too dark so it blends Correct. in with the black, but I'll show you another trick what you can do. Oh, you know what might actually work really well is that gold color from the light bulbs and the the painting oh, yeah. even. Yeah, so let's try that. Let's highlight this. And actually, instead of, um, instead oh, of the color theme tool, we'll grab the, the uh, Oh, did I have that saved already? Maybe I already had it saved. It might be in the swatches. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That does look better. Good call. That's a good call. I'm here for just hovering yeah. our director. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, Annika asks, I never use InDesign, but I'd love to know if there is a built-in color accessibility tool in the app. If, if yes, how do we use them? If not, where is your go-to place to do so? So could you repeat that? I didn't get that the first yeah. part. Sorry, I read it off really, really quickly. That's okay. Um, essentially, she's wondering if there is a built-in accessibility tool in InDesign. And I personally don't know. I don't know either. That's a good question and one that I'll probably look into myself. Yeah. Uh, Val or any, any other mods that might know, that'd be super helpful. I would love to know that as well. Um, accessibility is a huge thing and I'm not sure Definitely. if InDesign has it. Maybe. Uh, so let's bring in. So I have I have the actual text that we'll bring in and love it. That's I was one thing. If we're gonna do real time copywriting. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So one thing. Um, let me copy that out. Paste it there. So. One thing I like to do is, um, is work with real text. Even if I'm doing like a personal project, um, reason for that is if I eventually share it as a portfolio uh, yeah. piece, I like to see real text. So it does give you the real, uh, real vibe for it rather than using lorem ipsum. Um, so I always encourage try to use like real text. And I know, you know, some, oftentimes it's not easy to, to get, but there are some, um, you know, there are some royalty free sites that you can get like articles factory where you can go get like text that you can use, um, to, to align with what you're working on as well. So let's, let's start with the, um, so in the, in the media, uh, business, this would be called a deck, uh, headline. Uh, so it, it's, it, it also serves as a little lead into your, your article. So I'm going to just do command a, and in this case, I'm going to have it, um, 
this will be belie bold. So just staying with that belie uh, theme. And I'm going to make it 30 point. That might be obviously, obviously too big because I want it over two lines. So let's try 20, see how that looks. 24 looks good. Um, and then I'm just going to decrease the, uh, the letting a little bit. And shortcut for that is option and up arrow. I usually, as a rule of thumb, try to, I think what works sometimes is just having your letting two points uh, more than the point size of the typeface, if that makes sense. So right now it's 24 point. If I make it 26, um, that's a good starting point. And then obviously if some of the descenders and the ascenders start budding, then you're going to have to kind of backtrack a little. Yeah. But in this case, I think it looks good. And in the swatches, um, how does that deep green? No, I'm not liking that. Let's just make it black, but I do like like a tint of 90, 90%. So it's not full black. And so the typeface, um, the body text, I should say, Actually, let's save this because I'm gonna need I'm gonna need need to use this style again. So I guess I'll show you how to add that as a paragraph style. Um, you can actually just put your cursor anywhere or highlight the text, um, and in the paragraph styles, or you can do it in the paragraph panel. Um, just add it as a new paragraph style, and this will be called uh, deck headline. And I like to, because you may have, you may have four, five, six different types of deck headlines in a, in a style guide. So what I like to do is say deck headline and then 24 point, and then even add, um, even add the, um, the typeface or the font and the, the font weight as well. Uh, this takes out any confusion. Um, because you're going to have in editorial design, you're going to have some headlines that are bold, some that are light. So it's just, it's just good to, to be organized that way. I so love this. This is like, I always love seeing how other people organize their files and work in them. And I obviously have never been a professional in design person. So the fact that I've seen like the way that you've done this is really inspiring me to tidy up my naming conventions because i always have like light head, subhead dark subhead blah 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 you know and I'm, i come from like the web design world previously right. so you know i typically think oh h1s twos threes whatever and so seeing how you've kind of created a really nice naming system for this is brilliant and i i can't Can you... wait to to borrow this <laughs> yeah that's that's great and sometimes often when i'm handing off um, the InDesign file to uh, a client or whoever else, when they see that you've organized the, the InDesign file with these naming conventions and the simplicity of how to change and format text, um, they, they just, they love it because it makes life easier on them. Absolutely. Um, but if you ever want to change your, again, just much like the swatches that we updated, the global swatch in the paragraph styles, if I double click, it's going to open up the paragraph style options. So if I go out to, for instance, basic paragraph formats, and I wanted to change the letting, um, just change, have my preview button on, I can change the letting and you can see it's updating in real time there as well, but much like the swatches, that's going to take effect throughout the entire document. So again, keep that in mind. Awesome. Um, and then of course you could change the font family, uh, the style, the character color, all kinds of things. Um, but those are the, the basic things that you can do here. That's great. And Voodoo actually linked a whole like article of, from InDesign or from Adobe about InDesign accessibility tools. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to highly definitely recommend check that. people that are watching stream in chat, definitely click on it, take a look. Um, and then if you're watching this later, definitely look for Adobe InDesign. Uh, accessibility and you'll find the article. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So um, let's format the body text. So I'm going to just do a command A 
to select all. And for this, um, this will be Avenir next. Um, and I think we'll go with, uh, let's just, let's try regular for now. And let's do 10 point. So here's another thing about uh, body text in any publication. Um, you you want to make sure that it's not overpowering. And that obviously that's going to change from uh, typeface to typeface. But I think ten, anywhere between 10 points, 11 to even 12, depending on what you're using, um, is good. So anything more than that might be too large, but just kind of determine how you think it'll look. Um, so I have it set up. And one thing I didn't do that I want to do right now, actually, is I want to utilize some white space. I don't want, I don't want to use these full columns because I want to, I want to use, uh, have some negative space around it. So I'm just going to grab a guide and snap it to my left margin. And I'm holding shift in my right arrow key. I'm going to do the same on this side here. Only this time I'm going to do my left arrow key. So shift left four times. What is your, your step, I guess is what, this is not what's called the step between pixels or inches. How have you broken that up for each time you do shift arrow? Is it five or increments of kind of, how oh yeah, good, good question. I guess, you know what it's, um, that's a good question. Let's see. The other option too is instead of doing what I just did, you could just use the the rule the ruler up top. Do you mm -hmm. see if I move it maybe to one? Um, but it, it it might be in increments of. Yeah, I'm not sure, Alex. <laughs> no worries. So, <laughs> anyways, if you're tuning along and watching the stream, you can set it in your documents preferences, um, and you can set it specifically to however you want. So yeah. Um, you can set it to be like 0.1 inches or pixels or however you want. Um, yeah, you could change that up here. And in, in, uh, if you click InDesign preferences, units and increments, yep. um, oftentimes it'll load um, in pikas, and I I almost always change it to inches. Um, I don't really know many people working in pikas anymore. No, no, <laughs> no, exactly. So, um, so much like uh, anything else, you can copy and paste um, guides as well. So yep. shift option command V. And obviously this is just gonna apply to the left hand pages for now. And that's okay, I'll do the right hand pages in, in just a bit. Um, so for this, what I want to do um, is also in my bottom right hand corner here where you see the overset text uh, warning, this little plus sign there, it's very small, but go ahead and click that and now I have the rest of the copy in my loaded cursor. Um, now I could just click and plop it where I want or um, apply it to where I'd like it to go. And what I'll do is do that little ruler, real trick again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you could see um, it just adds a little bit more breathing room around the, the body text. Um, I'm gonna make this two columns here. So I'm gonna click on it once with my um, selection tool. And you wanna, you see where it says one here, just make that yep. two, that's where you set your columns. Oftentimes people can't find that or don't know if you're first starting it in InDesign. The tricky part is you can't be in the text, right? Cause then it won't show up. Correct. So you, you have to click it once and then just set it to two. And I want to have this maybe um, align with the top of my uh, my deck headline there. <laughs> Budival goes, whoa, wait. <laughs> wait, what are you talking about? What are we missing here? What are we missing? I think we were talking about the column thing, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, no. She says, so when you click the plus symbol, it copies the text that's not visible in your clipboard. Let me do that again. So you can see these these text frames are now linked because I've, I've copied the overset text. You can see now there's no red uh, warning plus sign. Um, there's a there's a icon there to tell me that the rest of that is over here. So let me delete that again. And you can see that red um, 
<laughs> I wish there was a way to like enhance. I the, know, I know. So that. let me click. Let me click it right there. You'll see it if you're working in. Uh... So to clarify that, Voodoo he's already got a huge text document that he's dumping into this. That's right. It's Look, not if... copy pasting from another document. He dumped it all into one text box, and now it's running over. Yes. And so now he's doing the like double click on that, and it'll copy. It'll continue the paragraph. Yeah. So and that's then if he adjusts the size of the first column, it will move from the second page over to the first page. That's a great way to put it, Alex. Just trying. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we move on to the body text here, I have uh, the byline and the source line. So byline is the, the name of the, again, this is all fictional. Um, let's go ahead and make this um, Avenir. Um, let's make it light for now. We'll, we'll be changing that. So let me double click there. Um, so with, with Jennifer, let's make, let's make this all upper. So shift command K. You can also use your upper case, all caps here. So for this, I want Sutherland to be bold. I didn't even oh. know about shift command K. That's, that's pretty sweet. I always go to the type styles and just do all caps. Like very I'm not manual. sure if that that definitely doesn't work in Illustrator. I think it's an InDesign thing because okay. I've tried it in Illustrator and uh, no luck. <laughs> no luck. It actually brings up something else. So uh, let's do Demi Bold and then this will be light is good. Um, so instead of making this into a paragraph style, you can make it into a character style. So paragraph style is like bodies of text. Uh, but if I wanted to pick something out within a paragraph, I can change that into a, a character style. So something like Jennifer, um, if I click character styles, I can rename this to be um, byline first name and I'll select Sutherland and this will be byline last name and then modish writer let's make that upper as well but a little bit smaller and let's make it i yeah i'm in i'm in avenir i gotta be in avenir next so let's make it um let's just make it italic and maybe a little bit smaller there and of course you can make you could change the, the color of the byline as well. I'll just leave it uh, black for now. And then you can set it to maybe um, something like that. I'd like it to sit on one of the, the, the row, the guides that I have there. And then maybe just snap the top of that. That's where attention to detail comes into play. I know um, I'm, I'm a stickler for a lot of that stuff. So I like to see, um, Let's see how the deck looks on these guides as well. We'll just shrink it down a bit, maybe 22. Yeah. Yeah, let's go back. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my second, um, actually let's do this as well. Um, maybe we'll use that gold color that you suggested, Alex, as the uh, kind of the back. Oh, that's a really good way to tie it all together. I like that. Yeah. So what I'll do is maybe, um, yeah, I'll have it like that and then have this set to maybe one of these guides here. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll click on my main image here and just add a white stroke, um, which gives it a cool look as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, that gives it a nice little separation as well. Yeah, a little separation. And you could see, yeah, I could call it a gold matches that artwork on the top there. And we did lose the Modish Magazine um, name tag up here, the label, but that's okay. Um, you're going to find the, not every page needs it. Yeah. You also have the option of doing what I mentioned. So if I go to page two and right click and do override uh, master items, 
what I could do is now this is unlocked. I couldn't, I couldn't change it before, but now I have access to just change it to white on this page only because I unlocked it. And I'll send that to the back. So you have, you still have the, the, the label, but we unlocked it and made it white instead. I like it with the white. I think it's nice and subtle. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to our CC libraries here and I'll bring in my second image here. And how do I want, maybe let's have it display like this. And again, I'll just do uh, another white stroke on that as well. Bring this down a bit. And then with these little headlines here, so we can, before I do that, actually, uh, what I want to do is I uh, want to get rid of these little paragraph breaks here. I was going to ask you earlier, what do you do about the paragraph breaks? Well, you could set them in um, InDesign as well. So yep. let's see how much text. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's not too oh, bad. So close. <laughs> so close. Um, good. So um let's go ahead and let's i'm going to select all of it and in my paragraph styles um also i'm going to add a um space after each paragraph so if i go to maybe 0 0.125 is good yeah that's nice and then uh with these maybe let's try we'll do them cap with it, maybe make a statement with rugs. Here's a little trick too. If you don't want to set up an entire um, paragraph style or character style is if I grab my eyedropper tool and just click on this here, make a statement, I can drag over each headline or each little subhead and it'll it'll apply that formatting to that. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to just pull color palettes and stuff with that and changed all my typefaces constantly. That's, yeah, it can uh, be tricky, can it? Yeah. Just working back and forth between the Illustrator and InDesign, sometimes you get those those little tricks messed up. <laughs> so Austin's looking here. Yeah, not bad. Um, it's great. I'm really this. liking that stroke, uh, the stroked frame with it. Let's do our shift option command C. And by the way, this gold, see the gold border here for anyone that doesn't know, that's the what's left of the image. So right now it's cropped to that, that frame that I have. Um, if I move it up a little bit, that, that'll work too. I actually wanna make this a little bit because I need that space up top here for a little pull out that will bring in oh, as awesome. well. I just want to reference the, um, just want to reference that because I did and, and I want to show you guys how to do this. Yeah. I want to bring in a chair like this. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll change this layout a little bit so I can show you how to bring that chair in. Hmm. And so what did I do? Just going back to this. Oh, I got, okay. I'm going to move the, the byline up top here. And what I'll do is I'll do a flush, flush, uh, right. So shift command R, or again, you can use your alignment tools up top. It's a good way of, it's a good place to put a byline. You could put it here, I guess, as well. Yeah, but let me show because you. that Y gives you that, that descender to kind of mess with as well. Yeah, exactly. So let's make this two columns here. And, um, I want to add a, a, another piece of furniture here and use um, use the uh, text wrap tool, uh, the select subject. So I don't have to go in and 
um, remove the background from this and bring it in that way. Or so I'm going to bring in this armchair and it may not, it may not align with what, uh, what we're displaying here, but I guess this could be a living room piece. That's okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to hold my shift key again and then just drag that out. And when you're dragging it out, just kind of, it doesn't have to be perfect at the beginning. That's okay. And I'm going to send this to the back for now. I'm going to click it and let's go to text rat. I'm going to tear that off and bring it down here and see if I can zoom in a bit. Uh, with the text wrap, I'm going to click this third option here. So wrap around object shape. You can see everything kind of uh, gets kicked over there. No need to worry just yet. So down below contour options, there's this really cool option now, select subject. So um, I think it works off artificial intelligence and it kind of picks up the edges from, obviously um, you want to choose an image that is not too distracting. Uh, it's just going to do its thing there. And you can see it picked up the edges of the chair. And all I have to do now is increase the, uh, the inset. Wow, that's super helpful. helpful. Yeah, so you could see with this in particular, you're gonna have some weird spaces down below. Um, you can keep increasing the wrap until that's resolved. So that one was pretty simple to do. Um, you can also bring in the... And see what looks best. So you can have try it like kind of bleed off the page too, if that... I always find a good starting point is to have it if you're using a two call if it's going in a two column text frame like that mm -hmm. to kind of put it in the the gutter and see how that looks now that's not a good text wrap so let's try going back to what we had well, that's kind of nice let me scale the the wrap a, a bit and then obviously um, you're going to have to kind of work with the, um, the text as well. So the, this doesn't read well, right? So you'd have to go in and kind of, uh, finesse that a little bit. Uh, but, but that gives you a sense and idea of how that, that would look. Um, also adding a simple drop cap to this. So I'm just going to select the L here and in my properties panel. Um, go down to the drop cap option here and increase the lines to three. And you can just stylize the L as well. So if I wanted to make it bold and maybe that gold color again. And you can open that up as well. You could see that um, the, the, the word year is a little bit too close to the L. Just put your cursor uh, right after the L and open up the um, kerning there. So option, right arrow. Oh, that can also be done helpful. here. Yeah. So let's try making these gold. Oh, that's a good idea. I I love drop caps. I think as time has evolved, we've kind of stopped using them as much as we used to. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to like what monks used to do, but um, I love a good drop cap. I think it's super, super awesome. And it's a really good way to like make things feel like it's more considered. Yeah, they stand the test of time, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so that's how you would put in a, um, I mean, that's a really powerful tool in InDesign now. I really enjoy that one. Um, so it's select subject text wrap. Um, let's yeah, that's go ahead. pretty powerful. I really like how it looks on the front front of the seat where you really get the contour of the, the shape of the, the seat itself, which is awesome. Yeah, I yeah, that's a yeah, exactly. Right, right here, right? Mm -hmm. Which yeah. really adds that like emphasis of like, look how cool and interesting this this chair actually is yeah which is what this whole magazine is about right it's kind of like your your dwell your modern lifestyle like you want to play up all this stuff through style and substance so you're doing that with your editorial work it's great 
I really like the, the call on the gold, uh, Alex. That was a good call. I know initially I went with green, but uh, I think this this works very well. I love putting gold on everything. So yeah. So in terms of captions, I'd like to know how, how do uh, the people in the chat, if you're working on an editorial design, how do you put your captions in? Do you type them in manually? Because I'm, I'm going to show you a way on how to do them more efficiently as well. Um, That's a great question. Chat, definitely let us know how you guys do your captions at home. Or if you're brand new to InDesign, that's totally fine. How would you think you would do a caption? Yeah, so not every image has to have one, but I'm just going to do a little style here. Um, so let's just type in, uh, welcome to the stream. That's good. And I'm going to make this Avenir next condensed. And let's try maybe medium and much smaller. Mm. I just want to make sure there's a good contrast between the body text and the caption. So I would actually make this light if I can. So maybe even regular. I guess we could try italic too. That would look good. Yeah, italics I feel like are always a good one because yeah. you never really use it unless you're doing like what block block quotes or other things. You don't really get to use italics as much as yeah. I personally like. <laughs> so let's go ahead and make that a style as well. So I'm going to go to paragraph styles and just add that in. And let's call this uh, caption text. Oops. I don't think I did that right. So let me try that again. Caption text. And this was Avenir uh, next condensed. And then that was 12 point. 12 talks. point. That's a little wordy. I mean, if you can shorten <laughs> that up, but that's fine. Um, just hit uh, perfect. Okay. So we have that set. Uh, I don't need that now. I can delete that. So um, these are all Adobe stock images that I'm using. And a lot of the times they'll come in with descriptions built in. Um, if there's not, you can actually go in to Photoshop, uh, for instance, open the image, go to file, file info. And there's a section there where you can add a description, save it, close it. And then when you bring it into InDesign, that description carries over with that image. So let's let's do this main image as a, as an example. Um, what I'm going to do is right click, and there's a there's a section here for caption setup. Under the the metadata section, you just want to make sure that you have it set to description, so that when you set up, when you actually apply this the the, the caption, it'll pick up the description. So I'm going to click that. And traditionally, captions for editorial design go below the image, so I'll leave it at that. You could set an offset to give a little bit more space between the caption and um, and the image. So let's try 0 0.625, for instance. And then because I've gone ahead and set up a paragraph style, which is there, caption text, have an ear next, condensed, I'm going to set it so when I put in the caption, it's already going to be uh, formatted to that. You do have the option to group the caption with the image. That's totally up to you. I'm not going. I'm not going to group it and just hit OK. Now that just set up the caption. That didn't actually apply it. So there's another step. Just right click okay. again, captions, and then you can generate a static caption. And you can see. What's the difference between a live caption and a static caption? That one I've never used. Maybe someone can has an explanation for that one. I, I don't. I generally just use static captions um, because I can pull them from I can pull them from the description built into the image mm -hmm. right into. And the cool thing about that is you can actually apply them to images throughout a document. So if you wanted to, you would do it, go to links. You would select all the images or the images you wanted and then mm. right click 
captions generate static captions. So once you set up a caption the way you want it, um, it'll apply. Now that's tricky because um, you may have to go in and start maneuvering some, some other things. Um, so let's try it with this one as well. So the caption in, uh, has already been set up. So I can go right and say, generate static caption, which that one didn't come in, which is surprising. I don't know why. Maybe there wasn't a description in it. Um, so you could just say room or interior design uh, of living room with, uh, I don't know, fancy furniture. I'm sure someone has a better description of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to snap that to that there. Okay, so that's that's a good way of putting in captions um, more efficiently rather than doing them, you know, typing them in. Because again, I take it back to if you're doing a if you're doing a design that has 50 pages, for instance. Yeah. Could you imagine typing in 50 captions if there were that many like that many images? Absolutely. But that would take forever. Painful. Yeah. Hopefully you're charging good, by the hour. That's a good word. <laughs> painful. <laughs> yeah. Very painful. So that's what we're, we're at now. I do have this little space here to just to add a little sidebar. So I'm going to, I do have that here. Um, okay. So let's uh, go. Misty is asking, what is metadata? What, a, what info exactly is being captured? So with metadata, you can choose kind of stuff around you know, city, description, location, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of things you can put in there, um, like photographer, camera, like all the stuff that can be used to give you a caption, right? Sometimes you might need to credit a photographer. Sometimes you just need to describe what the caption is. So you never really know necessarily uh, what you might need That's to do. That's a good way of putting it. Yes, perfect. Um, just a little, another little tip here. So. If you bring in text and it comes in with the last formatting you used, for instance, just do a command A, go to your paragraph styles, hold down your option key or alt on windows and just click basic paragraph. That'll strip out all the, the, um, you can also do a command shift V. Oh, let's try that and, one. And it, that works across all programs. V? Uh, Sorry, whenever you're pasting it in. So like whenever you're, you have it and you're about to paste it in, instead of just doing command v, v, you do command shift V and then it pastes it in all naked. That's awesome. Um, which is really, really nice. Especially if you're working like, you know, you've got a document open and then you're trying to paste something into your Gmail or something like that. Like you don't want all the formatting to get all wonky. So just doing command shift V works across not just Adobe products, everything in your life. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to use that for sure. Yeah, it's super helpful. So let's go in. Well, I didn't save the body text, did I? Let's do that because I may need that after. So let's just select any of that. And let's call this body text. Uh, so dash Avenir next. Uh, regular dash 10 point. And for this one here, I think I'll use Avenir next again. And let's go with maybe a, uh, again, because this is a pullout or a sidebar, try to make it different than the, the text you're using in the body text. So maybe medium italic. Now that, that's not too bad. Actually, it's a little too, let's go down to maybe just italic is fine. That's a great question. How do you get inspired? Chat, yeah. let us know how you get inspired. Angela, yeah. how do you get inspired? Well, before I even start a editorial design or any design for that matter is, um, I seek, I look at other people's work. That's, that's one of the givens. I always do that. 
Um, but I also either sketch out some of the layouts. I know I'm not doing that today, um, but I'm at a point where I can do these uh, layouts and, and be confident. My sketching, most of my sketching happens right on the screen. Yeah. But certainly, certainly when I first started, um, that that's important to sketch out. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be a Picasso. It's basically just, you know, frame with an X, much like you would see when you're drawing out a, a rectangle frame or what have you. And then kind of scribble where you would put the text um, and and th those types of things. But yeah, that's, um, that's how I'd get inspired as well. Looking, um, you know, Behance is great is a great source. Pinterest yeah. is a great source. Um, just looking through, I have a bunch of editorial design books, which are great. Um, yeah. So those are some of my inspiration where I, where I can draw from. Do you have any magazine subscriptions that you're currently super excited about? Not really. Uh, one thing I'm really, this is, yeah, the reason why I draw so these, these modern type of um, magazines, I don't know what it is about them. They're just so elegantly designed yeah. that uh, it just really catches my eye. Um, so there, there's, there's plenty. Every time I go to like, um, you know, the, the store, I'll go to the magazine section. And yeah. those are the ones that really um, draw, draw my attention just because they're so simply designed Yep. They use really nice fonts um, and things of that nature. Absolutely. So I'm just going to add a little um, side rule to this. Uh, is, you know, typically you would have to go in and draw in a rule if you wanted to put something next to this. Uh, how do you get inspired? Um, but if I, if I highlight it and go up to, I believe it's up here. Um, paragraph borders and shading. So I'm going to move this off the side, hit my preview button, and I'm going to click border. Now that doesn't look very good because it goes all the way around, but I'm going to break the link here for the stroke. And I'm going to set all these to zero, except for the left side. I'm going to set to the color to that gold that Ooh. Alex suggested. And you have the option to set the cap. Um, I do like the square, but if you wanted round, you could do that. Um, but you can also change the offset of it as well. Um, so you could do something like, oh, but I don't want, oh, I just want the left. So let me hit zero again, break that. And I just want to set the left. And I believe you can change the, uh, the type of it, um, the type as well. I think that that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. I had no idea you could do this. I, yeah, I'm, I'm normally over there just making the shape and then having to move it around the bounding box. So yeah, I'm just gonna add a little more thickness to it. Man, it's like four point is good. Just hit yeah. okay. Is there any and, way you could adjust the height of it? Yeah, good so question. It's a little bit more centered, or I don't know so how this. Even with that, I typically put it into its own. Let me see if I can. top edge, bottom edge, maybe baseline. There we go. Ah, so nice. it's right there. So you just Got change it. the bottom edge to baseline. So it sits next to you. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. And so what I'll do now is bring in that last. If you guys are just tuning in today, right now, um, Angelo is taking us through making a modern magazine over the next two days. And today we're just kind of getting the layout and type styles and everything defined and beautifully designed. And then tomorrow we're gonna work more on the like online version of this or an online magazine with links. And I think you even mentioned a video, right? Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you guys how to add video to InDesign. Again, it's something that people don't know that you can do um, and using InDesign's publish online tool so that blue down there doesn't look very good with this uh this <laughs> this new no, design so that's where we can go in and actually update that so let's go in and make it that gold oops
perfect. And again, that will that'll apply to, right now it'll apply to every page. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to do here is add the section. So this is home decor. So let's go ahead and put that in. That will uh, be Avenir next, bold. Let's open the tracking up a bit. And let's go ahead and rotate it. Oh, nice. Maybe have the yeah, let's have the, the bottom edge line up with the, the page number. Let's just see if it's too close. No, that looks good. Do you feel like you need double badging on that? Or is it just because you might do a split spread across one pages? Page. But what do you mean? The home decor on both pages. Do you think that that is already kind of covered or do you like to have the flexibility just in case you're only having one section that fits on one page rather than on the, the whole spread? Oh, do you mean these down here? Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. The home decor sections that you put on. Yeah. So these will only be applied to this first, these first two pages. Got it. And then the next two will be uh, outdoor living. So. I'll draw from these and paste them on the next one and just update them that way. Otherwise, I would also put those in the master pages, but because they're changing um, mm -hmm. from page to page. Um, so that that layout is, yeah, we're, we're, we're in good shape here. The, the one thing I would do is maybe try to find a place for this caption because um, it doesn't look well on the headline. So I would what I would do is find an area, perhaps some negative space in the, the image, like that green wall, maybe, or something like that, where you could still read it. I just think down here with the, uh, the center of the, the Y, it didn't look that great. Um, no, I agree. What if you put it horizontal and in the gold area? So that way it's still speaking to the image, but it's not directly on the image. Like you mean here? Yeah, kind of oh, in that area. Yeah. That's a good way of utilizing that uh, that space too. Yeah, and I, I think if you put it directly on the image where you had it kind of centered, it almost competes where you're like, you're right. should I be reading that or should I be enjoying that image? Yep. Take the hyphenation out of that. If you want to take hyphenation out of anything, just it's in your paragraph uh, options here. Just uncheck hyphenate. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's looking good. So I guess we can move on to the second layout here. Perfect. Yeah, I love that mood board up there with the inspiration bit. I think that's such a nice way to tie it all together. Yeah. I mean, that's a great way of uh, getting uh, inspiration as well. Some, some, oftentimes, another tool I use for inspiration is um, the Adobe uh, mobile app where you can uh, draw from different, uh, help me with that. What's it called? Colors? It? You're talking about colors? No, the Adobe, uh, yeah, you can draw from colors. You can take a picture. You could, you could take a picture of an, uh, a font and mm -hmm. it'll match it up, give you some uh, different uh, options. Uh, that are similar. Okay, let's move on here. Vudaval says, this is looking so beautiful. So Val's well, thank a fan, you. and that's all that matters. Uh, <laughs> but I absolutely agree with the sentiment. It's looking really, really, really incredible. Let's um, go to this. Feels like it could be the next Dwell article. <laughs> well, thank Adobe you Capture is what Vudaval Capture. Capture. Thank you, yeah. thank you. So the next layout will be this one down below here. I'm going to show you guys how to, I always get, um, you know, 
I always get asked how to lay out recipes for cookbooks. So if anyone's interested in, in learning that, I'll, I'll touch on how to add and format a recipe. Um, it kind of ties in with the outdoor living. So let's let's go on and do that. I might reference this again, um, but let's let's keep going here. Perfect. And it's right in time for summer. So it's perfect. Yes. Yes. And we can, uh, you know, go to back in our backyards and barbecue and it's great. Exactly. All right. So let's go to, um, we're done with home decor. So let's click on outdoor living. And again, have a focal point for your, um, for your layout. So that, that will be the focal point again. Let's crop that the way we want. And let's set up our second swatch group. So right now we did the spread one colors. Yep. Let's go back to the color theme tool. And you can see the minute I hover over this, it, it lights up and it's going to draw up a new color theme. So let's do that. Uh, let's see here. I tend to, I don't know why, I tend to always choose muted. Um, but let's go with... Let's go that dark is too, I think muted or deep has a good selection. So uh, you know what? I'm going to go back with muted. You can't go wrong. I think, yeah, I think you could do muted. Yeah. I like it because it has similar contrast notes that you That's had right. with the previous spread with the like almost gold uh, orange that you've got. And then that blue, the like the pastel darker blue feels kind of similar in the same vein of that green that you had. Yeah. So it, it keeps the color palette pretty cohesive. Yeah, I agree. And I guess if it works in terms of being consistent with what you're doing, so if muted works throughout, I guess stick with that. Um, yeah. All right. So let's make this uh, spread two colors. Let's try that. Send it back. Just going to give it that same stroke on the image. So just change the color to white. Misty says, we need more InDesign streams. I think that you've made the case for more InDesign streams. This is looking really, really good. Um, and it's taught me so much already. And I'm sure chat feels the same way. So, well, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My mind has been blown. Okay, so for this, uh, let's create a text frame and so chat. As we're working on this outdoor section, what are your favorite things to do this summer? Let us know in chat. Um, Drizzy says, any course to improve my ideas with magazine design? Well, Drizzy, you are in the correct spot. Um, <laughs> if you just now are tuning in, make sure you stick around for the rest of the stream. We have about uh, 40 minutes left, and then you can go back and watch the beginning of the stream. And Angelo will, will walk you through all the great things that he's done already um, and lots of tips and tricks throughout. Uh, and Paco says that he's going to be backpacking and lake swimming. That sounds fantastic. Yes. I think uh, Paco will like day two because I, I do a lot of like, uh, it'll be more geared towards national parks and things like oh, that. Awesome. The travel section. So stay yeah. tuned, Paco. Yeah, stay tuned, Paco. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Outdoor Oasis. I'm just going to kind of have these staggered a little bit. And again, let's go ahead and add that gradient feather. So for anyone that's just tuning in to add a gradient feather, the first step is just grab the rectangle frame tool and draw out, just draw out a frame over the area where you want to add that, that feather. 
And in the effects, oh, actually, first we have to make it black. Shift X to toggle between the two. And now we can go to our effects panel and select gradient feather. Use your angle rotating tool here. So I think 90 degrees is good for this one too, as a starting point, darken it up a bit. And then to send it backward, just hold your command key and use your left square bracket. Um, I guess if you're on windows, it would be command or sorry, control and left square bracket. But of course you could do it long form by going to range, send backward. You don't want to send it to all the way to the back. Nope. So I'll get lost. You get lost. Yeah. Uh, Charles D says that he'll be doing a photography ebook this summer, big passion project. So this stream is just a jackpot. Um, definitely make sure that you hit us up on our Behance's and let us know whenever you get that done so we can take a look at it. We'd love to see it. Um, I'm volunteering you for wanting to see it too, but if not, just send it to me. I want to see it when you're done. I'm excited for yes. you. Yes. Please share with me as well. I'd love to see, love to see your work. Yeah. I love like big photography books because, oh yeah, it, you know, the photos are really such sellers and then the type just kind of complements it. Um, so that's great. So I have it sit on that uh, guide there. So remember setting up the guides, that means, you know, it's going to help you with your workflow as well. Yeah. And try to utilize them as well as you're working. So they're there for a reason to help you anchor text or have it sit on a uh, line. I'm just thinking this would be a nice place for the caption as well. But let's see how let's see how things work out here. Um, all right, let's go grab the second spread. Copy. Deb says InDesign is my new favorite program. It's such a different thing than Illustrator or Photoshop. Uh, that's awesome. So you've converted people already. Well, I, I know a lot of people tend to use, um, you know, Illustrator or Photoshop for yeah. poster design, which is great, but it's hard to do editorial design in any, either of those. They're, they're not meant for it where yeah. I believe InDesign is the perfect, it's just yeah. the perfect tool for that. So, I mean, I, I used to work with people when we were doing web design work, um, before XD was even around, right. that instead of using Photoshop, like a lot of people were doing, we would use um, InDesign because you could set your type styles, you could set your paragraphs, your headers, all that stuff. And then you could export the images really, really nicely um, all at once. So it was a yeah. tool way above its time <laughs> for web design before, you know, that was really a big thing. Yeah. Back when fireworks was a thing. I like <laughs> How are we for time, uh, Alex? We're doing great, man. Are we okay? Uh, we've got about 30 minutes left. So Okay. Okay. 25. I think, I think we'll get there. Um, let's go ahead and make deck headline. This will be over three lines. Uh, making your dream outdoor space a reality. Let's just... Um, Let's increase that. All right. Oof, Charles says that. It's, yep, it's still a thing. People are doing whole 60 page catalogs in Illustrator and Photoshop. Yeah, it's. Um... Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Well, that's the thing. You don't have the luxury of having. For example, the master pages where you can take out yep. a lot of that early work, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember when I was first getting into my design career and I was trying to, you know, apply places and I didn't know any better. And I was building my resume in uh, Photoshop and I had hiring managers be like, man, your your resume is the, the biggest file I've ever seen. And it's because <laughs> it just isn't built for that. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's so, right. 
if you want those tight, nice, neat files, you're going to have to use InDesign. And then I learned. And then you learned. And I'm just, <laughs> now I'm learning even more today. So it's even better. So remember, just put your cursor in front of, um, in between there, option right arrow, or just open up the kerning here. You can see I've I've adjusted it to plus 40. So that's good. You also don't want the drop cap A to be too far away from from there. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of just using your own judgment on that. So I think that works there. What I am going to do is go back to my pages and let's create a new master page, which the prefix will be B, which is fine. I'm just going to go to my A master and copy these guys, command C, go to my B master, shift option command V as in Victor and just change these colors to this blue. That's so nice. now, so now it's matching. It's matching this theme. Okay. And what I'll do is you can see four page four and five here are still set to, they're still set to a master. Just go ahead and drag the B master pages to the ones that you want to set. And now you can see that these say B. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, Deb asked, do you embed the images? I've lost a few when organizing my files. Um, so I'll let yeah. you answer it. Yeah. So in this case, I'm using them right from my CC libraries. That's why you see this little cloud in the links panel. But if you're dragging them from your local drive and just adding them to, um, to your layout, they'll show up here. But if you're sending the InDesign document to a client or to someone, you have to make sure that you're also sending the links. So before, before you're um, sending that, just go to file and then package. What that will do is it'll create an InDesign file. It'll create an older version of an InDesign file that will allow people uh, with older versions of the software to open it up. Um, and it'll create a PDF and then you can zip that uh, compress that folder as a zip file and then send that this way. For instance, if it, Alex is sending it to me and I open up the InDesign file, I can go into my links panel and these will all be linked without those links. Um, you'll get this little alert saying the, the picture is missing. So that's very important to know. Yeah. The, the packaging and sending over correct files is something that it's a pretty rookie mistake. I think I've experienced a lot where uh, maybe a junior designer doesn't know how to handle files correctly. And they're used to Photoshop kind of having everything lumped into one thing. And yeah. so when I'm like, hey, can you send me the InDesign file so I can tweak things or whatever, I get back just the InDesign file instead of the, the package or a zip of the package. Yeah. Uh, and I need all the links, right? There might be types, faces that I don't have or images and all those things. Those, It's always a really nice thing if you can just go to the export package, zip that folder and then send it off to somebody so that they have everything you have. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Otherwise, what'll happen is when you open that InDesign file and the links are missing, um, the image that will appear on your um, on your screen will be uh, either pixelated or you know it'll be blurry. And that's just also telling you that there's no image there. So it'll put it in as, as a placeholder, um, but it's not going to, uh, I'm just bringing over the, the, um, the name of the magazine from my A master to my B master as well. Awesome. Uh, Missy asked, if you do a bullet point, how do you get the text to line up under the indent? Does that make sense what I'm asking? I think it does. Yes, it does. I think I'm going to, um, Let's see here. Do I touch on that with the recipes? Yeah, I think you do. I do. I do it. I do it as a numbering system, but not a bullet point. But um, I'll actually get there shortly, so I'll, you can tune in and you'll see that. So stick around for a couple so more minutes. Stick around. 
It'll Hopefully we can get to it today. I think we're we're doing okay for time. I think I'll be fine. All right, let me bring in the rest of the copy. Sorry, I keep reverting back to here because I want to. Yep, good. No, you're good. No worries. Uh, Glenn says that he's the only one in the marketing department that knows how to use InDesign. Learned it a little in design school, but I'm more self-taught. I do 90% of my print designs in InDesign. Great job, Glenn. You go, Glenn Coco. Uh, just kidding, Glenn. Went and <laughs> you go. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Keep doing that because, yeah, it's so much easier and it works better. That's really what InDesign is built for. It's for all that print work. Um, super important. So, especially when you're dealing with large bodies of text. So, yeah. Um, imagine trying to to put in a story or an article using um, Photoshop. So it's not meant for that. So, yeah. I'm such a I, I'm a fiend for Illustrator, and so even just setting type in Photoshop is such a more frustrating experience for me because I'm so used to like being able to play with my type and move it around and do whatever I want with it. And then I kind of have to like do it twice if I want to do it in Photoshop. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, I think I made this demi bold, but we will make it that blue color. Chris says the InDesign share for review tool is really helpful as well. And I agree. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I, I love the Adobe suite with all the updates lately with like even on Adobe Dimension where you can send a 3D mock-up to your clients and they can kind of rotate the object and all that stuff. Like there's just so much cool stuff, especially with XD where you can send them uh, kind of like a proof of the website and interactivity. It's awesome. So yeah, I can't wait to see where we are in five, 10 years from now with proofs and commenting and real-time feedback and working collaboratively with both our clients and our own teams. Yeah, it's amazing. Even InDesign has a feature where you can, um, so say someone marks up a PDF with comments, mm -hmm. you can import the PDF into InDesign with the comments and work right in the software rather than toggling back and forth from wow. Acrobat to um, to InDesign. That's, That's a helpful tool as well, yeah. I had no idea. Now I do. Yeah. So I'm just drawing a hairline there and I do have an image that I want to bring in. It's this one here. Uh, Drizzy says, what's the typeface name? The typeface is Belay, B-E-L-Y, Belly, yep, whatever. Yep. We don't know it's, how to say it. Yeah, if I think it's chat, B Belay. I've been calling it Belay, so B let's go with that. There we go. Well, that's what it is. And then the body copy is Avenir next. Um, next law is, any idea when Dimension will be the new Apple process, be on the new Apple processor? I do not know the answer to that. Um, so sorry, Axel, can't help you there. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add a text wrap to that image. So I pushes the text down. Now here's, um, I mean, this is an easy fix, but just make sure when you're using a text wrap and you're putting images in between text that, you know, things are reading cleanly as well. You could see outdoor lighting goes with this. So that could be something as simple as just doing a paragraph return and bumping that down. I'm not gonna worry so much about um, the overset copy here. Actually, I think that fits perfectly. Well, there you go. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and let's bring in the, uh, let's go ahead and bring in the caption for this one. Caption setup. Oh yeah, we've already set that up. So let's go to captions, static caption. Oh, you know what I'll do here? Let's give that a text drop as well. Ooh, what happened to our letting there? Hmm, that's odd. Okay, I'll just maneuver that back. 
Okay, so there we go. We have now that again, that was um, that was the description built right into that image. So I didn't have to do much uh, in terms of adding that. Anything awesome. that, yeah, if you're downloading stock images from, from Adobe stock, a lot of them, I think almost all of them come in with, uh, with the description built in. Yeah, they've done a really good job of keeping metadata. And I think that's been one of the big pushes from Adobe um, lately is like getting authorization or credit to people that built these things or the, yep. the Adobe stock. Um, yeah. So it's super exciting to see. Um, I, I've noticed when I've imported them, I've, I can see even the photographer and the camera and lighting setup that they yes. they use now. It's yep. so, so helpful. Um, also reminds me that I need to do a better job of setting up my uh, Lightroom <laughs> metadata. Oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. I've added that stuff into when I've used Adobe Bridge as well. Mm -hmm. Just going to decrease that a bit. Add the caption to this one. I think I could probably bring up this stuff as well. Let's get in the, I think I had the byline to this one as well. Let's see. So chat, if you have any questions, we have about 13 minutes left. So get your questions in so we can answer them for you. All right, so this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna do the the recipe there. And if we don't get it done today, we'll pick it back up tomorrow. But Perfect. at least we'll get it started. Um, let me get that. I'll just drop that in as a rough. So I, in the text, um, the text file that I've pulled this from, I went ahead and added tabs to this, like simple tabs. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna need that because we're gonna tab this this section here. I'm gonna make this Avenir next. Um, let's make it regular for now. Make it ten point. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff here. I'll just put it to the side for now. Now I'm gonna grab that last image here. So we're making grilled vegetables. Since it's open, it's almost supper time here where I live, yeah. so. So you're already getting hungry. Thinking I'm about already getting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already getting a little hungry. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Let's go ahead and do shift option command. Let's bring in. So for the options. indentation, did you just press tab? Is that how um, you got the? Yes. In the, in, in exactly. So in the text file, so word or just uh text, got it. I'm like, uh, yeah, just use a tab to, to separate uh, the amount or the, the quantity from the actual ingredients. Um, all right, so captions, generate static caption. All right, let's bring in these here. We have cooking time. We have serving, serve, how many it serves, and then prep time. And I'd like these to go right at the very top here. 
So let's do serves first because people want to know how many it serves. Cooking time or maybe prep time is good. And because these icons are different sizes, that the, the actual frame will change. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, and this, these are ones that you're going to have to kind of eyeball and see if they're roughly around the same size. Yeah. Trizzy asks, how to get ideas for magazine design? And I mean, it really comes down to one, if a client needs something or two, if this is a personal project for you, what are you passionate enough about that yeah. you think you could write good copy for? Because uh, like Angelo said at the beginning, uh, it's much better if you can use real words to write your magazine rather than just lorem ipsum. That's one, right. it'll give you actual constraints to work around, but two, it'll make it feel more real. And you don't want to necessarily, designing lorem ipsum, you know, it's helpful at times, but it, it doesn't give you real breaks. It doesn't give you real content to work off of. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. So yeah, try to use real copy if you can. Um, so this like, first one like for this, you could, you know, you could say six lorem ipsum, but instead you're going to say four or five people, you know, like things like that really help bring it together. Ex exactly. Yeah. You got it. So let's make this, um, medium 10 point. So this will be serves and then let's do a return and let's just say it serves three to five people. Let's center that uppercase. Let's make that demi bold. And let's make it that blue color. Are those icons live vectors or are they just yeah. So what I, yeah, it's there, they were vectors and I pulled them into, once you pull them into, um, the library, they become Got it. Like yeah, a, yeah. images. Yeah. So this was prep and uh, the prep time is 20 min and and what is the shortcut again for hiding all the, uh, bounding boxes? Cause I, I know you keep pressing it to toggle, toggle on and off. Oh, to like make them fit? No, not to make it fit, but to, to hide the bounding oh, box. That... Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, w. w. But you have, you have to make sure that you're not clicked in, obviously, into a text frame. Otherwise, Crunch. you're just going to type, <laughs> type W. <laughs> <laughs> I've done there, been there, done that. So, yep. All right. So let's just go ahead and. Perfect. All right, Misty is asking about under portable mushrooms, how do you align the text? Under portable, yep, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> okay, so um, let's first off, because these already have, let me, maybe this will help. So if I go to type and show hidden characters, see these little double arrows, those are tabs. So I'm, because I've already set those previously, I'm just gonna go ahead and select those and do shift command, B, oh, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted. Um, type tabs, oh, shift command T, had mm -hmm. the wrong letter. Okay, so you, you can set the tabs with the alignment that you want. I'm gonna leave it at less left justified. And this is kind of tricky because you have to set the tab. We only have one tab here, by the way, um, and we'll set it, you have to click on this white area. And so the question, what I usually do is just do a soft return and then tab, if that makes sense. There might be a better way of doing that. Um, if you do have a better way, let me know, but that's that's what I do. So anything that's like hanging, so I do a soft return, so shift return and then hit tab again, and that runs into together. Um, you also have the option, let me just go back to that. So now that I know it's shift command T, um, in the leader here, I can just type in a simple period. Now let me hit tab so I, I don't close this dialog box. And you can have the leader be like just dots that go to the item. Okay, but I, I'm just going to leave it at nothing. 
the ingredients header, I'm just going to uppercase it. And let's make it bold. Uh, Demi bold. We've got about five minutes left. Thank, thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. Just going to move that up a bit. So this here, uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to remove those paragraph breaks there. And I'm going to select these items here. And in my control panel or properties panel, they're, they're located in both places. Um, I, I can select bullet list or numbered list. So let's go numbered. And, um, but I think someone asked about bullets. So if you wanted to, yep, bullets. yeah. So let's go bullets. And then if I select this, you can actually set the, um, you can, you know, move those bullets off the, uh, give it a little bit more of an indent. Or you can also, oops move them in. You see right here, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. So under the properties panel in the paragraph settings, I guess it would be first line left indent. So I can bring those in and then bring in this back. So you can get those bullets closer to the, um, you can get them closer to the actual uh, text as well. And then I can also um, do a first or at pair, Add space after the after the paragraph, just so they're not so close together. Yeah, I think this is exactly what Misty was looking for. It's super helpful. Yeah, so it's in the paragraph um, section of the properties panel, or of course you can use the ind individual. What I like about the properties panel, it just takes out a lot of the having to open each window open yeah. um, individually. So you can do everything. It's like one-stop shopping, right? So, which is great. Again, it's all about efficiency. So yeah, and you know, the more you do this, the better you're, you'll get at it, and you'll you'll get all these small little tricks that you can can do as you're working, which will save you time. Absolutely. I'm just gonna pull a guide here, just so this is all aligned. Yeah. So obviously check for widows. And, um, so this is not, this is not ideal, right? So in a simple case, just hit return to bring that headline up top here. Even when you are, um, putting images in between text, it's better to have it end cleanly at the top rather than have the reader kind of read through and then making them continue on down below. It's just easier on the eye. Right. So just think of those little things. And that's what I was talking about with, um, attention to detail. So those are little things that, um, you can do. This is great. I know we've got only like two more minutes left. So do you yep. want to walk us through really quickly what we've kind of covered today and what we're going to be covering tomorrow? Yeah. So today we did two spreads. It worked out nicely. So, um, we're working on a uh, modern lifestyle magazine. The first section is the home decor. Uh, we learned how to format body text, add paragraph styles, create custom uh, swatch groups, um, among other things. Oh, the text wrap, uh, select subject text wrap. Yep. Um, what else did we do here today? We created a, uh, a recipe and we'll, we'll clean this up tomorrow as well before we move on. Perfect. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's great. So tomorrow on tap, we'll be working on a third spread. And then the last page will be an interactive design where we can add um, you know, buttons and forms and use object states to publish online or publish as an EPUB fixed layout. This has been just absolutely mind blowing on some of the things that I've been doing wrong the whole time. Uh, it's been super informational and super helpful. So I love seeing all these shortcuts. Um, I know chat has absolutely adored it as well. Um, I think the layouts one are just super beautiful to begin with, but also just incredibly functional, 
and scalable. And those are kind of the things that I love about really good design. So you've crushed it um, so far, and I'm excited to see what we have in store for tomorrow. Um, I know the online publication part of this is really exciting for a lot of people, especially maybe not being new to being new to InDesign, seeing all the potential. So yeah, this is great. This is exciting. Definitely come back tomorrow. Stick around with us. We are doing replays from XDDDC, uh, DCC. That's what I meant to say. Uh, definitely stick around. And thank you everybody for hanging out with us. Make sure to follow Angelo and hang out with us tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Done.